Bradley, welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me on, fellas, and I hope every year that, that uh, as much as I enjoy that distinction, that it goes away. We need to get back to the glory days. Seriously, and we'll discuss that in a second, but what's your favorite classic Nintendo game, Bradley? Duck Hunt. Duck Hunt. We were talking about that. Would you, okay, I, I admitted that I would just cheat and go right up to the TV screen. Would you stand back or would you go up? Well, it depended on whether or not I was winning or losing against the person. <laughs> you know, because you can show if you're winning and you're sitting far back, then it kind of you can shove it in their face. But once they start beating you, then you go up to the TV, and then sure enough, they go up to the TV, and then it turns into a wrestling match, which is what I really enjoyed. Yes. Did, did you ever have the do the track and field thing with the mat? That's with what I was going to say. That's what I was going to say. Second, guys, I wasn't really much of a gamer. I was more of an active. I was always like looking for a sport to play. So the fact fact that like those two games engaged you beyond just pressing the buttons and arrows those were my those were my top two and then th third beyond that would probably be i don't even know the name of the baseball game but whatever that rbi baseball, baseball game was. maybe yep yeah, rbi baseball. RBI baseball was great yeah yeah okay good stuff that's a classic trio that you well, just thanks for up. joining us riley it's great <laughs> to have you <laughs> yeah well, anytime guys we'll talk to you later <laughs> uh now to what happens for boa football in the 2018 season and for the last week, we've been talking specifically about if you had to name a starter right now, who would it be? And there are five, at least five guys in the potential running to be the guy for BYU running out against Arizona. We think it's going to be three, really, because of things that Aaron Roderick and Jeff Grimes have told us. But, Riley, if you had to project a starting quarterback for the Cougars in Tucson on Saturday, September 1st, right now, who's your guy? So... Um... It's tough. It's it's hard for me to say because if I were the coach, I'd definitely be anxiously awaiting uh, performance in fall camp. Spring, we obviously uh, was our first chance to get a look at, at Zach. And then, you know, Bo was kind of the guy that I think was running the majority of stuff in spring. And then Tanner and his, you know, being limited there. But I'd be looking forward to, a, honestly, I think it's a toss-up. Well, I think Zach will compete hard. I think there's just some things from being in the program, being college football, that in a fall camp setting, it being Zach's first fall camp and with Bo and Tanner having been there before, I think those two will kind of be the ones, though I don't, I don't rule out Zach starting a game at some point during the season. Um, but I'd say it's between Bo and Tanner, and from what I've been able to look at the at the offense and where it's built to have a quarterback with a run threat, I might give a slight edge to, uh, to Bo Hodge. The question with Bo is, can he stay healthy? Cause he, he showed some uh, flashes of brilliance, but there's not been a lot of volume. So what do you see as being maybe the, the biggest inhibitor of Bo Hodge not being the starter? I would second that. I think it's his ability to be um, to stay healthy. You know, you look at him, and guys like him are built so. Our, our old strength coach, Coach Homer, used to say they're they're built like drag racers. They'll blow anybody out in a quarter mile, but every fifth race, it seems like you know a tire blows out. Just because they're they're such finely tuned athletic machines, sometimes it's a little bit better to be like a Hemi truck to where you're not the fastest, you're not, you know, it, it's not as flashy, but every day you go out to turn on the truck and it starts up and it handles the workload that you put on it. So I'd say that's his number one um, thing that, he'd be, that he should be working on this summer, uh, along with his skills and his talent, but just injury prevention, uh, both from a physical and a training standpoint, and then also uh, a style of play that when he does get out of the pocket, uses athleticism, he doesn't uh, subject himself to to punishment that could lead to an injury. Riley Nelson, quarterback to BYU to a top 25 coaches poll finish in 2011. He's with us on BYU Sports Nation. Whoever the starting quarterback is in Tucson on September 1st, what advice would you give to that guy going in under a new offensive coordinator? To be, uh, you know, it would be interesting to see when they're declared, but even before you may be declared the guy, you should act as if you're the guy, and that means having uh, spending extra time with Coach Grimes and Coach Roderick and, and going into their office, trying to understand, not just understanding 
There's the execution part of a quarterback. In other words, you know the play, you know the motions, you know how to execute the play. But also, why is this play in the game plan? Why are we calling it in these situations? Is it setting up future plays? Are we calling it to take advantage of a certain player, you know, weakness in the player, a certain scheme advantage that we have? Spending that extra time to not just understanding the what and the how, but the whys with the coordinator so that you can be lockstep so when that play calling comes in or when that call comes in from the sideline it's never a surprise to you you're almost half expecting it um and and it will just make when once you have that level of mastery it makes the execution of the plays so much second nature you think so much less and ultimately you're able to allow your instincts and athletic ability to take over which i believe is the recipe for success for any athlete out there take your head out of it rely on your instincts and go play the game and the guy who may hit uh, fit that mold could be Tanner Mangum. He is by far the most experienced quarterback. But how do you perceive his career and kind of where he is now, Riley? Because he came in as a freshman. It was not he was not expected to play quickly through two successful Hail Marys, which were awesome. There's a certain amount of luck associated with those throws, but they were successful. Nine and four throws to tall receivers is has a really nice freshman year. And, and by really nice, that's probably an understatement. And then last year really took a step back, but there were some other mitigating factors. How how do you perceive Tanner Mangum's career at this point? It's been a rough one for sure. From his perspective, it's been probably not what he expected or not what definitely not what he hoped for. Um, but what if I'm Tanner, I'm excited for an opportunity to reverse that trend and I get one more shot at writing my story, writing my legacy. You know, someone who I had a really strong junior year, um, partly because I stayed healthy and we stayed healthy up front and on the O-line and we're relatively healthy on the offensive line. So we were able to, um, you know, finish out the season with 10 wins and rank. And then my senior year, I get hurt. The rest of the offensive staff is battling injuries and we kind of limp our way to the finish line. And honestly, that's the legacy that I left. And I wish it didn't happen that way. A lot of it was outside of my control, so I can't dwell on it too much. But Tanner is fully in control, at least at this point, of the of what his legacy will be uh, at BYU. Everyone remembers the fourth quarter, right? Or they remember that last year of your eligibility more so than anything happened before. No one's better evidence of that than John Beck who had extreme struggles um, through his underclass years but had an absolute fantastic and memorable senior year, and he's one of the all-time, you know, and he's positioned himself up there with one of the all-time greats. So I'm, I'm anxious to the chance to, to prove myself. I'm anxious for the opportunity to finish the way that I want to finish. Really, everything that's happened up to this point um, doesn't matter, except that it provided me some pretty significant and intense learning experiences that have forged my resolve uh, to go out and be the best player I can be this year. Great stuff with Riley Nelson on BYU Sports Nation. What are your expectations for a brand new offense coming off a four and nine season? Well, honestly, I think, um, and, and as you guys said before, there's there was a myriad of factors why uh, there was a little bit of a drop off last year. But I think things last year was such a struggle and things were so hard. I really don't see it getting much worse. I kind of feel that there's uh, only the only place we can go from here is up. Um, but my expectation is I, I don't know about yards and points and you know whether they're going to throw for a bunch or run for a bunch or what. But one thing that I expect is for an absolute culture change to uh, to have come. I think there will be. I think just by you know personality and leadership and from what little I've been around the program this spring since this new staff has been instilled, I think there will be uh, an emphasis on discipline. There will be an, uh, an ultimate emphasis on effort. And in college football still, even this day where everybody's so, you know, it's all about 40 times and how fast you are, how strong you are, how skilled you are. If you are, if you give great effort and you are disciplined in knowing and executing your assignments, then uh, you're going to be in the top half of college football, and that's what I expect from this offense this year. Riley, we appreciate the time, man. We'll do it again soon. Uh, good luck with your duck hunt tournament. I hope you win it all. <laughs> Always. <laughs> Thanks for having me on, fellas. Thanks, Riley.